Okay, to, under, to better understand the concept of uh, strategies in an extensive form game environment, I would like to talk about this next example, which is called ultimatum offer bargaining problem. Um, so it's a very simple environment. Let's consider a buyer and a seller. The seller is selling uh, his own picture, let's say, or painting, and the buyer is willing to buy it. And for simplicity, let's assume that the seller's uh, seller's cost for this uh, painting is normalized to zero, all right? So um, we normalize it as zero and the buyer's valuation is 100, meaning the buyer is willing to pay at most $100 for this painting and all this information is common knowledge, all right, for simplicity. So that means, uh, you know, this buyer and the seller can actually make a trade, right, uh, if they can determine a price. Well, this price, however, has to be between zero and 100, right? Because if, if the price is less than zero, I mean, it, it makes no sense, but if it is less than zero, well, the seller is gonna say, look, my outside option, if I don't sell this painting, I'm gonna get zero payoff anyway. So you're asking me to uh, you know, pay you instead. So I'm not going to do that. So there's gonna be no trade. If a price is above 100, again, there's gonna be no trade. Why? Because the buyer's maximum willingness to pay is $100. So therefore, if they, if they want to trade, they have to determine the price of this good. Well, the question is, how are they going to determine the price? Well, this is not really a perfectly competitive or imperfectly competitive market, right? There's just one seller there. Uh, it's, it's a painting. It's a completely sort of personal um, or unique uh, sort of outcome. And so, um, you know, how are they going to determine the price? Well, what they can do, you know, well, what we do in real life is negotiate, right? We bargain, you know, one side uh, makes an offer and then it, it may be too high or too low for the other side. And then the other side makes a counter offer. And then, so basically this negotiation, uh, you know, uh, rolls over. And then at some point they may or may not end up with some price. Okay, so once again, uh, we are going to oh, we are going to model this obviously. Well, there are different ways of modeling bargaining problems. This is probably the simplest version. The ultimatum offer bargaining is simple in the sense that one party makes an offer and then the other party accepts or rejects it. Uh, if he accepts, the game is over. If he rejects, the game is also over. All right. So it's like the this is why we call it ultimatum offer. You take it or leave it. All right. Uh, at that price. So how do we model this? So we assume that, for example, the buyer makes the offer. Um, and remember, he, can, uh, he, he is going to offer some price between zero and 100. So how do we, so they're like, uh, we assume, by the way, uh, this is usually, uh, you know, infinitely many strategies may not sound realistic to you. And to be honest, there is no price, for example, uh, uh, less than one cent. Yeah, I know, but uh, sometimes assuming infinitely many possibilities, sort of a continuum domain, is actually making problems more and more uh, easier. Uh, all right. So here we assume that the buyer can offer zero, the buyer can also offer 100, but in fact he can offer any number between zero and 100. The thing is, how many branches can I draw? Well, I can't draw infinitely many. So how can I represent a game where, you know, one player has infinitely many strategies? Well, we put this sort of uh, continuous uh, curve here, representing that anything between zero and 100 is actually a, a, a legit strategy, all right? So whatever buyer offers, okay, let's call it B, so this is the buyer's offer. Again, it may be zero, it may be 100. So B is some number in between zero and 100. What's gonna happen is that the seller will gonna learn this price, right? He's gonna observe this price. And then the seller has uh, opportunity to react to this offer. Well, he can accept the offer or reject the offer. So if he rejects the offer, I'm gonna say, uh, the game is over. Again, this is ultimatum offer. Take it or leave it, all right? Uh, for some reason, uh, the buyer cannot stay so long and keep negotiating with the buyer, okay? Again, this is a very simplistic bargaining environment. 
So sell, if seller rejects, well, then the game is over. And I assume that everybody basically returns to his or her status quo, meaning they get zero payoff. Well, if he accepts, however, <clears throat> uh, accepts price B, well, then that means the buyer is going to pay B dollar to the seller, all right, and will own the good. As simple as this. Well, in this case, what's going to be the payoff for the buyer and the seller? Well, remember the seller's cost was zero dollars. It was normalized to zero. And so uh, whatever price he receives is going to be his payoff. So uh, the seller, the second player, is going to receive B uh, payoff. Uh, well, what about the buyer? The buyers, remember, maximum will willingness to pay was hundred dollars. And so I need a bit more space. 100 minus B is going to be uh, the buyer's payoff, all right? So here you probably can, um, uh, I mean, again, the, the, I give you this game, all right? We, we model this strategic environment as this game tree. And so we are going to now talk about uh, how the strategies are defined. And later we are going to talk about how we can analyze this game and find the optimal strategies, but we are not there yet. So here, how do we come up with those payoffs? Again, these are the payoffs uh, I give you, all right? But we model the bargaining problems between a buyer and a seller in this fashion, in, in game theory. Uh, how so? Once again, the seller's payoff is basically the price minus the cost. And because cost is normalized to zero, price is b denoted as B, so his payoff will be B minus zero. Well, on the other hand, the buyer's payoff is going to be his willingness to pay. Think of his, 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 his demand, all right? Willingness to pay minus the actual price he pays. So you can think of uh, the buyer's uh, payoff as his surplus, all right? So the, the buyer's surplus, and this is the seller's surplus, basically, okay? So if this is how the game tree is, and if this is how the payoffs are, uh, later we are going to analyze this game. Uh, but here, I would like to talk about the strategies for these players. Well, uh, first off, is this a game with uh, perfect recall. Yes, it is a game with perfect recall. Well, how can I say it immediately? Well, simple, because here no player um, uh, uh, chooses uh, an act strategy more than once, right? The buyer moves once and then seller moves second and then the game is over. So buyer has no opportunity to move again. So therefore, nobody can forget or remember anything about past, all right? So therefore, it's uh, by default perfect recall game. Well, is this a game with imperfect information or perfect information? Well, the question is, is there any information that set that is not singleton? Hmm. Well, first of all, how many information sets are there in this game? Well, the buyer, uh, this is by the way, initial note, right? Uh, the buyer has only one information set. And in this information set, there are infinitely many branches. Okay, so it doesn't make his information set having infinitely many notes. He has just one note. Okay, what about seller? Uh, here, the seller has how many uh, decision notes he has. Well, for every uh, price buyer can choose, seller has an information uh, and decision note, right? For example, uh, I'm going to draw it somewhere here. So let's say this is the buyer, all right? If he chooses zero, let's put zero here, meaning as a price zero. So this is going to be the decision note for the seller, right? But instead, if he decides to choose, for example, 10, this is going to be the seller's decision note. If he chooses 20, this is going to be the de decision note. So you know what? By the way, any real number is possible, right? There are like infinitely many, there are many other uh, possible decision nodes here. So what does that mean? That means seller has infinitely many decision nodes 
all of which are singleton. So be careful. So having infinitely many decision nodes does not necessarily mean that they all are in the same information set. Well, here, the question that you should answer, can seller observe the buyer's price? Yes, he does. If the buyer sort of offers zero dollar, the seller can see that it is zero. The offer is zero, right? If the buyer offers 10, the seller will say, well, he offered me $10. So he's not going to say, did he offer me zero or 10? So this is not going to be the case. So the seller can perfectly observe the each price. And hence, seller has, yes, infinitely many decision notes, but all of those decision notes are, are singleton, meaning all the information sets for the seller. So he has infinitely many information sets and all of them are singleton. Hence, this game is a perfect information game. Okay, well, what's next? What are the strategies for these players? So the buyer's strategy, let's call it as buyer, is simple. Any number between zero and 100 is a strategy for a buyer. Well, what about seller? Well, the seller's strategy is a bit more complicated. Why is that? Well, remember the definition of strategy. Strategy is a function that maps each decision note or information set to an action available to that, uh, uh, to, uh, at that uh, decision note. So here, so how many information sets or decision notes seller has? Infinitely many. Hmm. How many actions available at each information set? Two. He either rejects or accepts. Hmm. So remember the seller's strategy is a function. So you know what? How I can write seller strategy as S seller, this is small s seller, it's not a set, is basically a function, right? This is how we write a function, which maps 0, 100 interval to this set. Uh, accept reject all right so that means the seller observes the price it's something in between 0 100 and he, as a response says i accept the price or says i reject the price if he sees different price his decision of accepting rejecting may be different so therefore each function which is mapping this domain to this range is basically, again, each function, each such function, meaning each function that maps 0, 100 interval to this set is a strategy. So how can I denote the set of strategies for the seller? Well, it's simple. Strategies, uh, I'm sorry, functions uh, such that S uh, maps 0, 100 into accept, reject, all right? So all functions satisfying this property is a valid uh, uh, strategy. And so the set of strategies available for the seller can be represented by this set, okay? So if you wanna think about some simple examples as a strategy, here is one. Uh, S, so we, because it's a function, we denote it as SB, all right? So SB is equal to accept for every B. So this is a one strategy which basically says uh, the seller is going to accept any price, all right? Another strategy, this is another strategy. So if you like, you can denote it by S prime B, reject, oops for every B. Well, so this is sort of the other opposite extreme. Uh, the seller, uh, yeah, the seller rejects any price, okay? Well, you can argue whether this strategy is optimal or not optimal, but we are not there yet. We will talk about this later when we talk about how we analyze these games. Here, we're just uh, sort of trying to understand what strategy looks like in a sort of a, a, a slightly more complicated extensive form games. 
another strategy I'm going to give you is what we call, uh, we use these strategies a lot, by the way, threshold strategy. All right. So the seller has some threshold. Uh, so S double prime, if you want to show it, B is equal to, uh, except if B is greater than or equal to B star and reject otherwise, meaning B is less than B star. Okay, so it's a very simple uh, step function. So B star is, in, is, is some value. So B star is some number between 0 and 100. All right, for example, here, um, uh, the B star is actually, I mean, it, it's except. So therefore B star is uh, zero. So here it says reject. So that means uh, B star is uh, uh, more than 100, uh, 101, for example. Okay, so here, um, yeah, well, in that sense, basically, the B doesn't have to be in between zero and 100. It can be any, uh, all right, you can, you can set threshold any way you like. You can set it like 1,000, so I'm not going to accept uh, any offer that is less than $1,000 because my painting is very valuable, all right? You, you, you can do that. So, uh, so the buyer's strategy is, I'm sorry, the seller's strategy is, is a step function you accept if the price is higher than some threshold or reject uh, lower than this tre uh, some threshold. Obviously, the opposite may be true, meaning a strategy uh, you reject if the price is high, sufficiently high, if you, you accept if it is sufficiently low. But obviously, that's kind of sound a uh, weird strategy for a seller because seller has incentive to uh, accept higher prices rather than accepting lower prices. Okay, but anyway, this is what a threshold strategy would look like, and it's just one strategy. How many strategies can we construct? Infinitely many, because there are infinitely many there's, there are infinitely many ways of mapping this uh, interval to this set. So therefore, there are infinitely many strategies for the seller. Okay.